Don't really need a prop <clears throat> to introduce our speaker this morning. This was news to me, William Ewing Mitchum, Jr. I think we all know him as Billy. Came to us from Texas City, Texas, where he was a plumber, a licensed plumber, not just a shade tree plumber, I guess. <clears throat> He knows what he's doing because he's done work for me, and I very much appreciate it. Now, I, you know, I, there's a lot I can say about Billy, but I, uh, I've had some special moments with him throughout his time here, and I had him in his first preaching lab. <laughs> I've, I've wrestled with what to say here. But the first word that comes to mind was redneck, and you may, you may uh, recognize that. Uh, but I, I grew to appreciate the fact that there was a no-nonsense person in Billy's skin. Someone that laid their heart out on the line and spoke to the best of his ability the things that was on his heart and strove with all his energy to learn God's word. But I will never forget, and, and I've really encouraged him to write a book of all the special words. I know they're not in the Greek. I've looked for them. But I will never forget the word delio. You know, that delio that you're supposed to have, and I will always remember that and treasure it. <laughs> Billy came to Sunset as a result of the encouragement of Several, but in particular Mike Reed, who is an alumnus of SIBI. He came here, he says, to gain more knowledge of the Bible so that, as a result, he can teach others the Word of God. When, a, when he recorded some of the joys and trials that he's had while he's been here, uh, I, I fully understand, because of his relationships with others, uh, why he wrote down he enjoyed spending time with his classmates. Uh, now, if you haven't been the, the uh, blessed recipient of Billy's cooking on the grill, you've missed a treat. Uh, he, he does a great job there, and, and certainly wherever food is present, uh, Jim Blaine, I mean others, <laughs> will be there present as well. <clears throat> And there's going to be a good time. There will be, be a lot of visitation, and, and that certainly speaks well to, to Billy and his hospitality and his spirit, he and Mary both. He, he wanted and he has really enjoyed growing closer to God uh, through the study of the Word. Uh, and I can certainly attest to the things that I've seen in Billy's life as he, has, he seeks to, to model Jesus in everything that he does and says. Uh, some of the trials he, he mentions here was uh, managing the time for schoolwork, and I think everybody can relate to that, and most of all trying to remember what he studied for the test. <laughs> There's just something around. You can't put a wrench on all that memory work that you do. If you could, I'm sure he would have done really well at that. He, in describing... Um, himself in terms of the qualities that God has developed in him up to this point in time. He says, I've, I have a better understanding of the Bible and a whole lot more knowledge than I had when I came to SIB. I've grown in many different areas of my life, and that's also been uh, wonderful watching him as he's experienced uh, different aspects of campaigns, both domestic and foreign, and to hear that impression uh, that it made upon him. After he uh, finishes here at SIBI, he plans to go into full-time ministry work and uh, to work in particular with young people and families and teaching them how to become uh, solid in the Word and good leaders in the God's kingdom. I want to read from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, as um, we'll invite Billy after this to come and, and preach. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us 
and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Billy, come and preach the word. Man. First of all, I would like to thank y'all, the staff, the faculty. You have been a great uh, example to me. And not only that, you have took the time out to share something that's very important to us. And that is the Word of God. I also want to thank Sunset for having this school for us to be able to come and learn and study and understand the way God really wants us to be. Um, I also want to thank supporters out there. Without our supporters, my family and I wouldn't have been able to be here because my, my whole life I lived was providing through my trade, which was plumbing for 20 years. But this morning, I want to talk to you about, have you ever thought of what it really is like to walk in the footsteps of Jesus? And what I want to do is I want to take us into that time. And I want to look at a few little things that will open our, our understanding of, of the way Jesus really was and how he was. And not only that, an example that he gave for us also to be. Just imagine yourself being with Jesus as he went to the tomb of Lazarus. And Jesus called out and he says, Lazarus, come out. And then a few minutes later, out came this man who was dead for four days. Came out of the tomb alive. Or what about the time when Jesus fed the 5,000 with just a sack lunch consisting of two fish and five loaves of bread? Or what about the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years? And because of her faith in Jesus, knowing what he can do, just reached out and touched his garment. And she was healed. What faith is that for somebody to have? Just relying on Jesus to be able to do that. The faith was in her. She knew that Jesus could do these things. Think about what it must have been like for one of those who was healed and then the ones that were absorbing everything that he had said. I wonder what it was like. I, I, I really would like to, and, and we have it here, but what it would have been like in that time. Over the past two years of my life, here at SIBI, I have seen what it was like to walk in the steps of Jesus. And I say that because of what Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 says. I can see the changes in my life, my relationship with others, and the growth in the Word, which I was taught by you wonderful teachers here. Ephesians 5 and verse 1 and 2. Chapter 5 and verse 1 and 2, it says, Be imitators of God, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ has also loved you, gave himself up for us, and offering in a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. And it's, Paul's telling the Ephesians to be imitators. But what he's saying, that therefore, it says, is as you are going throughout this, throughout this world, Be imitators of God. And do it in a way of love like children love. And I have really experienced it a lot here lately with my kids. And I bring that to an understanding because in in my job, in my past, I had to work all the time. So my time spent with my kids were very little. Now that I have more time, I could see the love that I needed to show.
I just want to share a few little points to you about what it, what it is to truly walk in the footsteps of Jesus. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, Jesus says to the disciples, he says, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And I begin to think exactly what does that really mean to me. And I find that it's hard at times. Because what we have to do to deny yourself, you have to put everything to the side. You have to put your desires to the side. Your ways of thinking. Titus 2 And 12 says, to say no to ungodly things and worldly passions and to live a self-controlled, upright, and godly life, lives in this present age. You know, sometimes I, I really enjoy barbecuing. And if I had the time to cook all the time, I would do it. Because that's what I love to do. But what he's saying, he's saying, put that. Put that desire to the side. Concentrate on me. The later part of that says to take up his cross daily. Take up your cross daily and follow me. What is it like? I begin to think, and this is what I think. I think that... Though times begin to get tough and rough with us, that carrying that cross becomes heavy at times. But what he is saying to take up your cross daily is the way that we're supposed to act. It's a lifestyle change. We're supposed to be setting examples of God, of Christ, in the way that we do things. And though times get gets tough for us, and we, and we want to set it to the side? This is what he says in Luke 14, verse 27. He says, As If anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And I think that plays a big part in, in our lives. If we're not willing to put away the desires that we have, how, we, how can we carry the cross that he wants us to carry? How can we be the imitator of God like he wants us to be? Another part that I want to bring to you, though carrying your cross, you run into trials and tribulations. And what I want you to do is I want you to imagine what Jesus felt when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing that he was about to be betrayed of what he was thinking. Or what about the 39 lashes that he took across the back, across his body being beaten for us? What was he going through? Could you imagine what he was going through? What about the nails that was driven in his hands and then through his feet? What it was like. Nor did I ever understand sometimes it's, this is God's love for us. Each drive of the nail in the hands represented a sin that we've had and that we will have. Christ carried the cross all the way up to his death. Not setting it aside. Not putting it on the ground. But he gave us an example. Gave us an example of how to do these things. I also remember myself going through some trials. Some hard times since I've been here. 
Like Gibby says, some of the trials that I had was trying to balance out things. How to have time for my kids. How to ha- have time for my wife. And also have time for schoolwork. It became pretty hard for me. The devil will do anything that he possibly can to destroy what God has in store for us. And I think what I'm about to tell you was something that became a little discouraging to me. Because as many of you probably know, as we were headed to Mexico City, and we could sit back and laugh about these things because I think it's funny, but it also was a discouraging time for me in my walk with Christ. I checked in at Lubbock. Airport headed to Dallas, and it started right there. When I got ready to get on, check in, and get on the plane, they had given me my wife's tickets. And not only did they do that, they tagged my bag with my wife's boarding stuff. So he says, you cannot get on the plane. You you got the wrong ticket, so go back over here and we fix it. And I get back on, and and I'm able to get on the flight, and I head to Dallas well, my luggage was in Dallas also. And I, I think this part right here really bothered me on what the devil does. Because as I was, I don't know, I had this seat right next to the window where they were loading the luggage. And I looked outside the window and I see my luggage, not on the conveyor belt, but sitting to the side. And I knock on the window and I say, hey, that's my luggage. <laughs> Load it up. <laughs> you know? Hey, hey, come on, load it up. And the next thing you know, they took my luggage and put it on the cart, took off this way, and I was headed this way to Mexico City. Can you imagine what was going through my mind? How in the world am I going to make it a week with no clothes? (laughs) No hygiene whatsoever. And I began to get discouraged about what I was going to do. I lost my focus on what I was going to Mexico City for. Due to the loving brethren that I've been around with, they they were a blessing to me. We were able to get some stuff for me for a few days, which I'm very blessed because we go to see what how Jesus works, how God works. And I took my mind off. I began to think, and I asked myself, "Why are you even here?" And I started thinking, I said, I knew knew why I was here. And the reason why I was here was not just because I had to have a campaign to do. But I wanted to go and tell somebody else about Christ. So about three days later, I think it was, we come in from a hard day's long walk of handing things out. And there's my bag. What a blessing. But when I seen the bag, it looked like they tied it to the back of the airplane (laughs) and flew it over there. But I didn't run out of clothes. And I had my hygiene, so I was excited. (laughs) Also, while I was there, I was able to teach a couple of classes. I remember one night, I think it was a Thursday night. Or, yeah, Thursday night. And we had studied with some people of the church over at, um, in Mex- at the church in Mexico City. I don't know about you, but it was kind of weird trying to teach a class and have an interpreter. But through the message that we delivered and we gave, we ended up adding one. 
to the house of God. Which has been a blessing to me. Which really brings out Matthew 18, 19 through 20. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even till the end of age. And I begin to see how that scripture worked. See, it doesn't matter where we go after here. It doesn't matter if we go to a foreign nation, foreign country, or even here locally. But he says, go and make disciples of all the nations. We're not limited to where we go. We're not limited to who we talk to. Everywhere, if we're going to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, and carry the cross daily. This is what we should be doing all the time. So, so what, right? You tell me all this good stuff, so what do I do with it? What I want to do is I want to encourage you, no matter when we leave here, but to continue to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. So when you do look back behind you, who footsteps would you see? Would you see yours amongst the footsteps of Jesus? So much that we, we see in what we've heard. The last two years, It's been a great example to me of how to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. So I encourage you to continue to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Thank you.